Hello, everyone. Um, so we're going to continue with our parade of uh, convergence tests for infinite series. In this one, we're going to take a look at the alternating series test. Um, so let's jump to that. So the alternating series test is nice. So what we mean by an alternating series is one in which uh, the terms of the series go alternate between negative and positive. So let's, let's just write, uh, excuse me one second, I thought I had this in the right place. Let's just write the alternating series test out. Start there, alternating series test. Like all of our tests, we'll have some um, conditions and if you meet the conditions, you get to make some conclusions. So here's the conditions. We say if, the alternating series given by negative one uh, to the n minus one, b to the n equals b one minus b two plus b three minus b four plus and on and on and on where the b sub n's are positive if this series satisfies two conditions uh, b sub n plus one is always less than b sub n for all n and the limit uh, as n goes to infinity of b sub n equals zero, then the series converges. Okay, so this is our alternating series test. I want to make a couple comments about it. Um, first of all, the way that I've written it here, I'm just using what your text does. Uh, they start with the first term positive and the second term negative. That part doesn't matter. If this was n here instead of n minus one, that part doesn't matter whatsoever. Um, we can always pull a constant out of our series. We had a, 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 a rule at some point telling us that if our series converges, multiplying it by constant won't change that's a negative one. If it converges anyways, one wouldn't change that. Um, the other comment is this piece right here for all n. Most of our tests, say that but we could really substitute it any condition that says for all n almost any condition that says for all n we could really say eventually after some point right and and all i mean by that is this so for instance we've already seen we'll we'll, we'll get back to the alternating series test, but i just want to make this quick comment we've seen series like this one over two to the n which is one half plus one fourth plus one eighth and on and on and on and we've, we've decided that this is, is equal to one. Um, we've used some of our previous methods. Well, I could take the same series and change some of the terms in the beginning. For instance, maybe I take this one and double it so I get one plus one half. And then after that, I do the same series as above, right? Well, all that really happened is I added one half here and I added a quarter here. So I'm adding three quarters total. So I would have seven quarters instead of one. So if I change any number of the beginning, it doesn't really change anything about the convergence or, or not or, or divergence of a series. So for all n is a little too strict. We could say eventually. So if the first few terms do something weird, but eventually it turns into an alternating series, that's where the convergence is gonna, is gonna live. And we'll see an example where that's gonna come into play in just a second, okay? But I don't wanna overcomplicate things. This is essentially the right thing. And for most of the cases we'll see, this will do us just fine. So let's do a couple of quick examples. So I'll start with, let's start with a really simple one. Um, we have seen this series before. Uh, one over n, and know that it diverges. The harmon harmonic series. You could. It's a p series with with one as p. But let's throw 
an alternating sign on it, right? So the way I've written it, this would be negative one over n, plus, uh, sorry, negative one over one, plus one half, minus one third, plus one fifth, and on and on and on, right? So it's very similar except for this alternating part. So let's, let's see a few things. First of all, it's clear that besides the negative one, we have terms one over n, which are positive. That was one of the conditions. It's also clear that one over n plus one is less than one over n, right? For positive numbers, if I add one to the denominator, I get a smaller, uh, I get a smaller fraction. Um, what else? What else? And then we need the limit as n goes to infinity of one over n equals zero, right? So these are our conditions. An alternating series where we have positive terms multiplied by a plus and a minus alternating. We have a series that's decreasing. Each term is getting smaller than the one before and the limit is equal to zero. And so we can, we can then conclude this series, n equals one to infinity, of negative one to the n, one over n converges. So pretty straightforward, I think. Um, all right, let's do another pretty straightforward one. Let's consider the convergence of negative one to the n minus one, n equals one to infinity. Let's do a uh, times 3n plus 1 over 2n minus 1. So again, these terms are positive, right? Without the alternating part, this for positive n, this is always positive, so we satisfy that condition. We might have to do some work to see if it's actually decreasing, but I don't even need to go that far. It's pretty simple to take a look at the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n plus 1 over 2n minus 1 and see that this limit is not 0. Okay, So we don't satisfy this condition. Okay? So we don't have to do anything else. It doesn't matter if we satisfy the other conditions. This series, um, we cannot conclude that it converges by the alternating series test. Okay, um, And in fact, uh, this series won't converge at all. This series will diverge. But I'm going to leave it alone at that, that the, the alternating series test was inconclusive here. It told us that it did not, doesn't tell us that it converges. Okay. All right, let's do one more. This one's a little more work to do. Let's look at the series and test for convergence. Let's say, let's start at zero on this one. And let's do negative one to the n. Let's do uh, n squared over n cubed plus four. Okay. So what do we need to do? Well, First of all, we need to know that we have positive terms without the alternating part. That's pretty obvious. Positive n squared is positive, positive plus a number is positive. These are going to be positive. So that part's simple. Let's look at the limit of the terms. All right. So there's there's a few ways we can solve this one. Um, We've seen these before, and anytime we have polynomials, if we have a rational function with polynomials in the numerator and the denominator, if the degree in the denominator is higher, this is going to go to zero, right? In other words, the, fast, the bottom grows much faster than the top, right? When we get to a million cubed, is a million times bigger than a million squared, so this fraction is getting very tiny. A billion cubed is a billion times bigger than a billion squared. So the, the denominator is, is growing much, much faster than the numerator and getting tinier and tinier. As the fraction as a whole is getting tinier and tinier. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is show that if we take the, 
the let's let's call these the b sub n. So if b sub n is equal to n squared over n cubed plus four, we need to show that b sub n plus one is less than b sub n, less than or equal to, right? Which means we need to show that n plus one squared over n plus one cubed plus four is less than or equal to n squared over n cubed plus four. This is not necessarily obvious, right? We're adding a number in the numerator, we're adding a number in the denominator, which one's gonna matter more? So the way, one way we can approach this is I'm gonna look at functions. I'm gonna let f of x equal x squared over x cubed plus four. Okay. And I'm gonna look at the derivative of this function. So this is a quotient rule. So I get two x times uh, the denominator minus the derivative of the denominator, three x squared, times the numerator, so I'll get two more factors of x. And all of this is over the denominator squared. Okay. So what I'm trying to do, I want to show that this function's decreasing in order to show that the series or the sequence of terms of the series are decreasing, right? Like, let's just draw a little sketch. If I've got a function that's decreasing and the terms of my series are equal to the values of this function on the integers, then those are clearly decreasing, right? That's our big, our big logic here. All right. So um, here's our derivative that I wanna I want show it's negative. I'm hoping it's negative. At this point, doing this, this is a hope, right? I, I don't, it could turn out that this derivative is positive for the values I care about, and we can't actually make the claim and use this alternating series test. But let's look at what we've got here. We're only concerned with positive x. The, the denominator is always going to be positive because of that squared. So the, the, the sign of f prime is determined completely by the numerator. So let's just focus on the numerator for a second. The numerator, I can rewrite it as x times, I'm factoring an x out, what am I left with here? I've got two x cubed plus eight. I factored an x out of this term, so I have minus three x cubed, which can be rewritten as so I'll have 2x cubed minus x cubed is a minus x cubed, and I've got an 8. I've got this, right? That's my numerator. Now, remember, x is only positive. We're only putting in positive x because we only care about this on the sequence where the, for the positive integers. So the numerator is positive, which means f prime is positive. So f prime of x, sorry, I, don't, I wanna look at, at negative, pardon me. F f prime of x is less than or equal to zero if eight minus x cubed is less than or equal to zero. Okay. Let me make sure we see that logic. Here's our derivative. The, numerator, the denominator is always positive. So it's never, we're never gonna get negative unless we get a negative in the numerator. Here's our numerator. The factor x is always positive because we're only concerned with positive x's. So the numerator is only negative if this thing is negative, right? Which means, eight is less than or equal to x cubed, or x is greater than or equal to two, okay? So what this means is, after the value x equals two, this function is decreasing, right? So what it means is, I haven't actually shown that the terms of my sequence, the positive parts of the terms of my sequence are, are, are decreasing for all n, but this is that point I was making in the beginning. It actually only really matters what happens eventually. And so after the, the n equals zero and n equals one term, everything else is decreasing, right? The rest of the terms are decreasing according to, according to this rule, right? So we've got this series after the first two terms that satisfies the conditions, 
So if that part converges, if the infinite terms after the first two converge, all we're doing is adding these two extra values on that don't necessarily conform to those conditions. It doesn't matter. It just changes the sum, but it doesn't, it doesn't, those two terms can't be infinite. They can't suddenly, you don't get right next to infinity. If you add one more, you're in infinity. You're either going off to infinity or you're not. Right, and adding a one or adding a seven in the beginning won't change that. So this is a good enough condition for us that we now have, right? So because of this, I can say that f of x is decreasing. So f of n plus one is less than or equal to f of n, which implies b sub n plus one is less than or equal to b sub n, right? Because our function is the same uh, as as this, uh, the the sequence on the integers on the positive integers, so we have got a alternating an alternating series whose terms go to zero and whose the positive sequence um, I don't have a good word for that but if we ignore the alternating part the positive terms that are left over are decreasing therefore. by the alternating series test, the sequence converges. All right. Um, okay, that's it for this one. I will see you guys next time.